Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Universal Soldier movie thoughts. There is a ton of fun with Dolph's character, of course. You know, the war is over. Not for me, not for her, not for you. And, you know, when he's aiming the gun, you know, deciding where to shoot her, you know, should we shoot her in the stomach? No. In the chest? No. I think we should shoot her in the head and you know click it's empty and you know she runs off and he yells at her it's empty like don't you see isn't this funny am I not am I not hilarious you know and I love his face and everything going on when he is trying to blow up Veronica you know First, you know, you see close up of the grenade and he's about to pull the pin close up of his face and it's just this, you know, almost kind of base animalistic, you know, just really evil kind of facial expression, you know. And then, you know, she runs off, you know, he throws the grenade and yeah, you know, and then his face when when he sees Luke coming at him, you know, first like, uh, and then, uh, and then finally, uh, just completely, but it's just, it's hilarious. So, you know, such a, you know, such flexibility in, in his facial, facial muscles and the, the expressions he can call forth, you know, and, you know, you know, let me teach you about the chain of command, son. <laughs> when I say jump, <laughs> you ask how high. <laughs> you know, just yeah. And and the you know, this ongoing thing of him thinking that it's still in Vietnam, you know, and it's like, you know, you're you know, you're gonna face a court martial. You're all sentenced to death. You know, and like, you know, I can't believe you brought poor folks into this. Just the, the whole, yeah, and the, just, yeah, and, and I love when, you know, when Garth and Woodward are like trying to trick him. You know, we're gonna, I'm gonna quadruple the serum. You know, no, no, no I'll go in. It'll look better that way. You know, and he goes in very carefully and then you know grab by them is there is there a problem you know just i just i i just have to check the injector i, I you know there might be something wrong there's only one way to find out you know it gets the the thing all from you know are you ready it's memory clearance time you know pushing him so that the, the needle goes all the way through, you know, like the syringe went like in his neck all the way through his face and out. That is, that, that's painful. And, you know, love when he like, you know, when, when he goes in and there's like one of, one of the guys in the freezer suits, like grabs a gun and cocks it, you know, and like you've also got that, that I don't know what rank he is, but he's clearly military. The, the, we'll have a full debriefing tonight guy, you know. And, you know, he also grabs his gun and, you know, he shoots the military guy and then grabs the, the, the arm of the other one so he can't shoot and just punches him through the glass, you know, and reaches in, you know, it's like breaking like, I don't know if it's like all the way through the brain and then like separating the, the upper, you know, the, the, the very top of the spinal cord from the brain or like, you know, the, the nose bone breaking into the brain, just something's, you know, really badass. 
and you know wiping off the blood any questions you know just complete badass so much fun as a villain and of course everything about the the you know the, the ear necklace you know they're at the very start do you hear me do you hear me you know and I, I love how you know at first we see him with all the ears of like I don't know if it might be the rest of the the platoon you know or wait platoon is the, the unit you know the, the ten soldiers that they mention you know that you know there, there are at least ten or whatever they say you know put them on ice put them on ice you know <laughs> and the just you know, I, I love that the very start you know from very you know just like raining and explosions and stuff you know and explosion and then Jean-Claude gets that other guy you know, what happened search one man kill the whole platoon and then he runs off explosion again and then he's dead you know just yeah you know that that's a 90s action movie for you several explosions in the first few minutes and you've got you know this but but yeah you know and yeah I, I don't know if it's like some of the Vietnamese or if it's just the rest of the the unit that he's got the ears of but yeah you know ear necklace and you know then yeah, then, then when they, you know, they, they find that, like, yeah, what the heck happened here, you know? And then, you know, you know, a lot of the movie passes. And then once he's woken up and he's killed, you know, the, what was it, Colonel, Colonel Ross or something, you know, then he starts collecting years again when he, you know, I'm giving the orders around here now. And, you know you're wasting your time he can't hear you <laughs> just yeah and you know then he starts and and then a little later we see him and he's got like three sets of ears and I figure that he took them from, you know he every time he kills someone he like takes their ears it seems like so he he's took he took the the ears off the you know the guy in the freezer suit thing and the the other military guy and you know he's still you know like sewing kind of thing and you know the I think it's yeah it's, it's Woodward who comes over that's right before the quadruple the serum and he goes over and can can I talk to you I'm all ears <laughs> and you know the yeah, I think yeah, and then then you know you've got the the guy you know when when he walks in and you've got all these guys like you know laughing at him, you know, throwing empty beer cans at him. Yeah, I got a nice necklace. I got one just like it, except with noses, you know. And then you know he stands there and he like kicks three guys without you know with with the right leg never touching the ground between three. And then he describes the you know they're, now they're in this white and yellow Buick without a front or a back window. He should know he you know he flew through the the actually was the front window still there? Did they shoot it out? But but yeah you know and you know the the guy who just made the, you know the noses he like pulls the hat down and don't take my ears man. And then afterwards you know you know what I th I think I saw you know do you have a pencil? Oh sure. I like your belt. Can I have it? <laughs> and he just pulls it off. And again, you know, you have this great conscience. He's holding this guy by one leg, you know, holding him upside down because Dolph is huge. Just like, you know, like I said in the review. But yeah, and the, you know, I love the, you know, the times where he clearly exhibits, you know, I, his, his, own identity and he you know we can tell that there's something going on that isn't you know ordered right from the start you know when he's you know made to kill like you know when when you see the two like I think they both ring the neck of the you know checkpoints one and two guy and the you know 
but but yeah, you know, Dolph seems to do it more brutally, and then he goes up and like kicks him right in the face. You know, it's a POV shot, great. And you know, he he shoots the what's his name, Huey, the the cameraman. You know, and yeah, and and then you know when they arrive at the gas station, he can tell something's wrong because he sees all the ice, which I'm not entirely sure. I mean. Did they just bring a ton of ice in the back of the car from the motel? Because the gas station, would that really have that much ice? I mean, motel has ice, of course, but yeah, I, I don't know. But but anyway, I think it's one of the only continuity things. Also, I feel like there's at least one guy killed at the very start who doesn't have a checkpoint thing going on. Like, don't both Luke and you know, yeah, don't they both kill two guys outside? I don't know, maybe it was only Dolph who kills two people outside, but, but, yeah, also love the thing with, you know, checkpoint one, two, and three, all player, you know, they're buying it, you know, just great, and, and it's again, okay, today, maybe they somehow picked it up from all the way around. In 92, how the heck did they pick up? Because it, it seems like it's, it's the same voice, you know, and do you really want to risk it? If you can tell that the voice is different, you know, but, yeah, you know, how the heck did they pick that up from, and, and have a recording ready? And apparently the recording, you know, it plays only once, and, I mean, we, we don't see if it's going to play again, but certainly it only plays the one time, and presumably just... Yeah, okay, if only if, if, even if it's only supposed to play one time, that's still, you know, they, they just put it in and it, it, you know, says. And they also, they, they knew that they hadn't, like, immediately before that said checkpoint one all clear, because then it's like, wait, you just said, why are you saying it again already? You know, so it's just very, yeah. Anyway, the, and, and I love how you can clearly tell the terrorists had a great plan here. You know, they have the, the two checkpoint guys before you even go down the dam, you know, and they, they kill, you know, those two guys and put the, the recording in. And then you've got, like, I, th I think maybe at least, yeah, at least Dolph does the, the repelling face down the Hoover Dam. And then he kills the third guy who's still outside of, I guess it's inside the dam itself, I, I don't know a lot about the, the dam itself, but yeah, inside the dam, and you've got, you know, the guy who's listening to all three outposts, and he's got the two guys with the, you know, assault rifles, and then in comes, is that, well, that's not Ralph Mueller, is it, it's, I don't know his, his name, but, but yeah, you know, he walks in, and Dude looks like he's just, you know, a, a, like, handyman or something. You know, he doesn't come in wielding guns, because if he did, they'd immediately kill hostages. And he lets himself be shot. And, you know, the, the camera, again, somehow, they have a, a program that, like, identifies gun by highlighting. Maybe today we have something like that, you know, but back then. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, it's science fiction. And, you know, he, he gets shot, and they walk over, and, you know, you know, just, you know, okay, well, he's dead. We pumped him full of lead, you know. And that's also, like I said in the review, people actually do get hit in this, you know. It's not that they just, and, yeah, he can, you know, they, they're going to have to, you know, remove the, the bullets from him. But, you know, we, we see them get ready to do that. You know, Garth is like, well, he's, and, and I always have to do this part, and I hate this part. <laughs> And, yeah, he's, yeah, so, so he gets, you know, pumped full of lead, and then they look, and they look a little, for, like, or more guys coming, you know, and then he gets up, and he shoots the leader, who's, you know, he's sitting around all the hostages, and then, again, Dolph and Luke, you know, yeah, Dolph and Andrew come in, Luke and Andrew come in, and, you know, each, you know, headshot one, like I said in the review, those are remarkably accurate, somehow silenced, and remark, you know, fairly, you know, there, there are some desert eagles, they would, they would take those heads off, you know, okay, it's only 357, but still, it's, yeah.
anyway, yeah, the yeah, a really great plan on the, the, the those terrorists that really planned that out well, you know, and then you know the the, the units also swam all the way in there. How did they swim so fast? They're eight seconds behind schedule, you know, and they like you know, and and again, you know, dropped off a little far off, so they have to swim so that the guys, you know, so that the checkpoints one and two don't spot the helicopter, you know, again. Someone's coming. They've already killed like a dozen hostages or something, and we see them kill another hostage right when they come in. You know, clearly these guys mean business. You know, and yeah, and the the plan to take them out by, you know, by the the I guess Colonel Ross and yeah, very well thought out. It really takes care of the various checkpoints and such. Now, I suppose that more or less covers, but, but yeah, you know, Andrew's various references, you know, clearly still thinking that he's a nom, you know, which is, of course, a very, very popular, you know, a, the, the war that, you know, that we love to hate that, that keeps, you know, remember how awful this was and then we can you know build a movie partially around that and yeah yeah so so the you know when when he comes in you know I'm looking for a deserter he's traveling with a female POW you know he yeah he clearly still thinks you know and he drags them into the mall and everyone's like what is going on you know and, where's the freezer you know and this poor like you know, 13 year old who's like, you know, working there for a little, you know, to, to like make more of an allowance or like, you know, get a little bit of job training. Sitting there, you know, clamping to me, over there. <laughs> and, you know, he walks in there, kicks meat aside and drags them in there. And it's, of course, not enough. You know, for, for one thing, they were, you know, it's been a long time since they were properly frozen and you know the the freezer itself is not we we saw with with Luke in the bathtub ice all over you know and and that's the thing Andrew doesn't seem to have fully accepted or understood that because you know, he also he never sees Luke with with all the ice in there Woodward and Ross I think they both see the bathtub with all the the mostly melted now ice you know so so they fully understand but Andrew doesn't seem to he he doesn't manage to bring any of them back so and and you know you've got I think that's Mueller at least oh wait yeah I think it's Mueller I, I guess when he was told to drop the grenade he actually did throw it at the other two or something and it's also we don't see Woodward after that so I can only assume that he was killed in the blast as well which I guess you know, he, he didn't want any part of it from when, you know, yeah, you know, we, we killed an innocent man. He he wanted out there. And he was so, you know, you have to stay with this or, you know, yeah, it'll, will, you know, obviously this is off the books kind of thing. But, but yeah, you know, so, yeah, maybe he let himself, and, and he wanted to go in and do the injection so he probably also feels guilty about Garth so yeah and yeah you've got the you know Sergeant Scott has issued an order will you follow that order in in the commentary track they mentioned they had to give him just one line that's the one line Rob Mueller has you know yes sir there you go you know he's had a line now <laughs> and that again you know not stretching the, the beyond the the acting talent you know most of them just have to be stone-faced and look tough and such and even you know even that they they just very shortly you know like what's his name T tony tiny lister or some, something like yeah you know he's only very briefly seen you know very early on and then you know right around like yeah, I think he, he gets blown up when they storm in, you know, and he is like, and he's dragged into the freeze. But, but yeah, anyway, you've got, you know, Rothmuller 
grabbing a big thick frozen, you know, or yeah, yeah, at least partially frozen steak and just you know, just munching down. <laughs> just yeah, you know, I, we don't know exactly how they get nutrition, but clearly Luke was hungry when he came out. So yeah, and it's uh, yeah. The and and you know, <laughs> Scott really shouldn't have left, you know, Woodward alone with the other with the remaining Unisols because, yeah, I mean, that's yeah, but but then you know, he keeps almost letting them, you know, he he only kills them the last minute with most of them, so yeah, sooner or later he doesn't kill one in time, so yeah, and the but but yeah you know he stands there in the mall Muzak's playing you know you you know you kick ass or kiss ass and I am busting heads you know the, these the traders they're, they're everywhere you know in runs these you know several mall cops or you know actually they, they might be real cops by by the but yeah you know run in See? They're everywhere. Just, just complete psycho and, you know, black comedy with, you know, there you go. That that just proved his point. You know, to him, to him that proved his point. Clearly, those were, you know, traitors and deserters and yeah. You know, and and the the way they kill each other at the very start is also really cool, you know. You know, after after Andrew shoots the the male, you know Yeah, and he's actually he's completely innocent. Luke says that, you know, the village was cleared. You know, the the hostages were innocent. And, you know, yeah, so so Scott's just killing you know, and he knocks you know, knocks the gun away, knocks him in the head you know, the girl runs and, you know, gets blown up and then, you know, he charges and, you know, stabs Andrew with the, you know, with the bayonet right in the chest. And he's like, how did that happen? He clearly thinks himself pretty unkillable. You know, throughout most of the film, he doesn't act like, you know, there at the end, he's taunting, like, he's aiming at an empty gun at, you know, yeah, at, at her, and, you know, he takes his time throwing the grenade, and then doesn't check if she's actually dead, and he's throwing Luke around, you know, clearly not worried that, you know, it's like, you know, when, when you look at the Terminator, most of what Arnie does is the Terminator, if it worked, it would kill the person, you know, he doesn't really waste time, he doesn't really, like, just, you know, yeah, he doesn't fight, he goes in for the kill, you know, and, yeah, Scott, he's, like, he's certain that he's gonna, you know, he's, he's gonna win this, you know, yeah, also with the, with the bus, you know, he's just throwing grenades in there, if he wanted them dead, he would have had, you know, pretty sure that's Ralph Miller, at least, he would have had him, you know, ram it much sooner, you know, or like shoot out the tires or something. But no, nope, he takes his time and, you know, want to play catch? Are we having fun yet? You know, the, the whole, yeah, to him, this is fun. You know, th this is a game to him because he's, he's going to win, obviously, you know. And yeah, so he's stabbed with the bayonet and like, what? You know, he shoots Sean Paul, you know, and, or Luke, and he, you know, he gets hit, and he fires the assault rifle several times at him, and they both fall over dead, you know. And I really like how, from that first scene, you know, pretty much everything, every time the two directly, actually, yeah, briefly finishing a thought from earlier, when, you know, Scott was, like, seeing the, the ice on the ground outside the, the gas station, you know, he knows 
they're not inside. They're using the ice to, to hide body heat. And he gets into the car that they were already driving because, of course, they used the same car. Otherwise, they'd have to, you know, short, you know, short, short, well, whatever, you know. They still have the keys from the motel, you know, and the, while the others are bursting in and shooting at a human shape because it's, you know, man-sized, you know, thing. And, you know, and they've gotten the, the you know, the gasoline all the way you know, leading up to the tank, don't smoke near the tank, you know, nice setup, and, but yeah, he goes into the back of the white and yellow Buick, you know, gets, you know, some, some fiber wire or whatever, and he tries to strangle Luke, and the one mistake he makes is not to buckle up, you know, he should have buckled up, and, you know, and of course he couldn't, because then he wouldn't be able to lie down properly and, and then get up, like, he does, but, yeah, but, and, and that's, again, clearly, neither of them are being stupid. You know, Luke had no reason to believe that Scott, he doesn't know that Scott is awake. He hasn't, you know, realized that. Or, I, know, I guess he maybe realized it when Huey was shot. And yeah, actually, maybe he, he should kind of seen that one coming. But, yeah, you know, they, he, he hides from the rest of the Union Souls using ice very smart, and luring them to, to shoot the human, you know, human-shaped, human-sized cutout, or whatever it was, and, yeah, you know, and he thinks that he can completely get away with it, not realizing that Scott saw the ice, and, yeah, anyway, yeah, so back to, you know, you have that first scene, and then, you know, yeah, everything in the rest of the film kind of or, yeah, every time the two of them really have a direct conflict, it's based partially on that, except maybe the, the fiber wire. The first time being seeing the hostages, where, and it's apparently, according to the commentary, track, those were actually the same actors. You know, the, the hostages, the, the two. Hostages there are the same ones who played the, the Vietnamese. I don't know. Maybe they were each other's, you know, parents and children or something along those lines. But but anyway, yeah. You know, and then he remembers I protected hostages like that before. And, you know, shoot the traitor. That's an order. And he turns around and that's Dolph standing there, you know. <gasps> you know, the guy I'm working with just, yeah, and, you know, completely freezes up, and then, you know, the village was cleared, Sergeant. They were innocent, you know, and as he says that, you know, Dolph, you know, Scott, looks very subtly over to him, and, like, you know, you can tell he's awake as well. There's, yeah, he, he realizes what's going on, but he knows not to, you know, it's, it's actually kind of funny how he's simultaneously this over-the-top, you know, out-there psycho and this very careful and precise and, you know, very, like, cool and calculated, you know, and it's not only in that, you know, you also see it when he's just ordering them in, you know, but yeah, with, with the quadruple the serum scene, he you know, for, for a lot of that, he's completely calm and barely, you know, raises his voice or makes, cracks jokes or anything. Anyway, yeah. So that's the first. And then with the cameraman, again, you know, the film, you know, oh, can, can we talk about this? You know, and he, he, you know, he's about to shoot Veronica. And, you know, just like in the first scene, you know, he's about to shoot the woman, then he shoots the man instead. And again, you know, flashback, he sees, that he, like I mentioned in the review, they use flashbacks and visuals well. They, they point this out in the audio commentary as well. It just, yeah, you can, you can understand what is going on without someone having to explain. Now Luke is remembering that, and the reason he's doing this is that, you know. And I find the kind of... 
the history repeating itself kind of thing. I find it works because these are, you know, Luke is the type who would defend people even at the risk of his own life. You know, he was that even before Scott went crazy and Scott is the type to just randomly kill someone like that because he's seeing enemies everywhere and yeah, so so he kills the camera and, and they're like, come on, we did, uh, we did not order you to, you know, stand down. We did not order you to shoot. And, you know, Luke does basically the same thing, you know, kicks the gun away, kicks the gun hand away, knocks him in the face with the, with the butt of his own gun and, you know, gets the hostage, you know, get, get them away from there. And yeah, so... And, and so it's, you know, throughout the film, he is treating her like, you know, he is, he is freeing this hostage. He is freeing this villager who was innocent. And then at the very end, we have the rain. We have this kind of, you know, we're, we're not in the city. We're not in this kind of, you know, slightly off, you know, it's, it's on the road to some, you know, it's not a gas station, it's not a motel, you know, we've got, again, this kind of farm, is, you know, because he's farm boy, you know, and, yeah, so, so, yeah, on the farm where first it was, you know, the Vietnamese jungle kind of thing, you know, and it's raining, and then, you know, Andrew joins them. Missing something? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the keys. Where are the keys? You know, and and that whole thing, because, you know, we don't really think, like, you know, it's, well, you know, Colonel Ross was found dead, and we're still looking for Veronica, and she's like, oh, yeah, you know, and calling them. Whatever you've heard, it's a lie. You know, sure, I'll come up, we'll... we'll talk it through, you know, they still don't believe me, I think I can convince them, you know, if she still has the film and or the documents, then certainly, and, and like, like she said, at the bus station, Dr. Gregor will help them, except if it's the alternate ending, but thankfully, yeah, anyway, the, yeah, so it's, Yeah, so, so everything is like it was before, and, and you have that little hint of, you know, be safe when you're driving out there, the, the storm's getting worse, you know, so, something like that, I don't remember the exact words he used, and, you know, suddenly Scott is there, and then we're back, you know, Scott is, you know, saying we, we have to kill this, you know, this, this woman, is this female villager again for, for all intents and purposes and you know and and in the minds of both of them basically excuse me except maybe Luke he's more you know realizing what is I, I love the bit with with Nixon as well again doesn't really have to be said or spelled out it's just he sees young Nixon who he was used to and then he sees older Nixon, and then he looks up at a mirror, and he can tell that he hasn't aged. And, yeah, that, that really conveys it both to him and the audience. And, you know, I love when he, you know, he walks out. You, you can't leave. This, this area is not safe. You know, in, in the room we're safe. But you're not safe out here. And he's just naked. And he's, what do you, why are you naked? You know, and, and the motel are, Mom, come and look at this. You should be ashamed, and she, you know, she's clearly, you know, just enjoying the view, and yeah, and and also the second time, not this again. Can you at least keep your pants on? You know, the the gas station guy, you know, the, what are you doing in there? Nothing. Just what do you mean, park a car? Park the car? Have you ever heard of valet? Valet? Do I look like a valet? And just. Yeah, you know, there's a tracking device. Look for something hard. What about that? No, no, that's, it's, you know, is, is that supposed to be there? It's, that's very normal. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not going to cut it out. And, and grabs the knife, <laughs> you know, ugh, this is so nasty, you know. Are, are you okay? Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to be, I, I need to go lie down, something like that, you know. 
anyway, yeah, so, yeah, you know, you've got all of them there, and, you know, Andrew, he remembers, you killed me after I tried to make you shoot the, the woman, so I'm not going to leave it up to you this time, you know, plus the events of the film between then and now, you know, and, yeah, you know, and he threatens to shoot, and it's again, this is the third time that he's aiming a handgun at, you know, someone he considers a, yeah, an, an insurgent, basically, and, you know, he, he keeps threatening, you know, where is he going to shoot up? In the head, you know, which is where he shot the other two, you know, both the male Vietnamese villager and the, and, and Huey, the cameraman, and then, you know, he, press the button and all the while we're seeing her working on cutting through the the rope again it's really resourceful she you know she keeps freeing herself it's awesome and just yeah you know it's it's a farm there are these you know saw thingies that yeah and you just use that on the yeah you know i mean and this is this is a woman who she's a reporter she's not like trained for like survival and all this type of stuff you know she still she's really yeah also though after the the motel has been destroyed you know twenty dollars security deposit <laughs> and and like and and the first time you know it's like this is, you know, ridiculous how much they have to pay. And then afterwards, when it's completely destroyed, it's like, maybe you shouldn't have overcharged them, dude. <laughs> you know, and it's like, you know, you know, all our rooms have, you know, have, have air conditioning. $50 a night. You know, that's, yeah. That's, the, 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 the young couple, they had it right. That's, it's that kind of place. You know, it's not this fancy place that you stay. No, no, no. It's the place you go for a night or something and yeah and I love that they use the body heat there to sh to hide from the yeah you know and Garth is like I don't even need to use the tracker anymore because we got him and then you know he misses that you know he's hidden in there but anyway yeah so you know it's fifty dollars a night all our rooms have phones too you know it's a fifty and yeah since there's two of you now it's double occupancy that's another 10. 10, right. And there's a small matter of a $20 secured deposit. $20, right. So, you know, she's clearly, she's really annoyed by this, but they don't have a choice. You know, they don't have gas. The place is out of gas. And, you know, she's expecting they'll stay there until the morning when they can get, you know, another, or like, you know, she'll call a doctor or something, like she said. But, yeah, back to the, the end fight, you know, and the third time he doesn't kill the the insurgent in his mind, and then we get the grenade again, which, you know, it's only the second time that he throws the grenade, but the first time Luke didn't quite manage to save the, the woman that, you know, the woman that was Scott's hostage from, you know, as far as, you know, she ran, and then she looked back, and he was like, no, run, and then, you know, blown up by Scott. And again, run, you know, we the audience are like, go, go, run fast, this is now, and she doesn't know, she doesn't know that this is exactly how it went again, you know, to, to Luke, this is a horrible case of deja vu, and to Scott, this is like a second chance to do even better, and, you know, he throws the grenade, no, you know, and then, you know, the final fight, he's motivated, you know, and, you know, the, the, you should have taken your medication, and then he gets himself some, and then, you know, the, you know, a little later, you know, one, one drops and rolls over, and then crawling, he just barely gets in there, and Scott pulls him up, you know, and stabs himself, and, the, you know, this is such an, innocent look at the idea of syringes. Not a single one of these were sterilized. Every single one of them had, you know, they, and they don't even like do the, you know, to, to get the air out. It's just, 
them. There's, you know, they don't have to remove the thing that we expect to see on needles today. But yeah, so so I guess it is entirely possible that you know Luke died, the the you know from from an infection or or the, the like, and you know just you know mere years after the events of the movie and. If he hadn't gotten Scott, either, you know, he'd probably also be stuck with something. So, yeah, there's that. I suppose I should go into more detail about the alternate ending, whether you've seen it or not. But briefly to... Hold that thought. Alternate ending. Briefly to describe it for those who haven't or maybe forgotten. Haven't seen or maybe have forgotten. Yeah, I'm not good at the whole thing with like starting a sentence and then actually ending before I start the next one. It's just, yeah. Mouth won't work quite as fast as, as thoughts will. That has nothing to do with the alternate ending. The alternate ending starts around the time they're in the, the farm. And once the... When does it start? In... The, the, I think it's when, around the time that she's been blown up. She survives in both of them. But, yeah, you know, in the alternate one, the parents aren't taken hostage. Luke never, you know, also briefly, I love about the ending that, you know, of course the whole thing with, you know, say goodnight and you know, goodnight and then, you know, he gets, you know, kicked into the, and, and ends up on the thing, and Luke goes over, and then he grabs him, and tries to, you know, push him onto a spike, and then, you know, breaks the arm, you're discharged, Sarge, and, uh, you know, and of course, you know, you're dead, soldier, no, I am alive, you know, that's, that's cheesy, and, you know, yeah, press the button, and out flies the ears, you know, where's Scott? around but but yeah you know so the the parents are not taken hostage he does not you know don't do drugs kids and after the yeah after Scott is dead the father shoots Luke and turns out to have you know and, and Dr. Greco comes and he's apparently in on the whole you know he was a bad guy after all and he's like you know, saying they weren't actually your parents. Your actual parents think you died, and you know we can't like we we can't let anyone know what happened here, kind of thing. And you know, and and they pump him full of bullets. It's ridiculous, and the, the more full of bullets than I think the 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 posing as a handyman guy in the start. You know the, that unit's all, but but yeah. And then the police come and stop them, and Veronica reports, and then, you know, she can't quite, and, you know, she, she leaves it, and the, yeah, and, and then we have her voiceover, which is also, it really doesn't fit, because at no point prior to this was the story being told to anyone. There was no, no narration or anything, you know. It, yeah, it, it really doesn't, I'm also not entirely certain that the whole thing with day one, day two, and day five kind of thing, that that really had much of a point, because it's not like, you know, they, they keep freezing him anyway, so it's not like how long can he live without the, and it's not so much that the Unisol program is going badly, it's more that one of the pre, you know previous Unisols is, you know, very effectively destroying them with, you know, the, the gas station blow up, but, but yeah, anyway, you know, and, and the, her voiceover explained that he lived, you know, for, for years and then died a natural death, something like that. And like they say in the, the, on the DVD extras, that's just not very satisfying. And yeah, you know, this, it's been a fairly dark movie, you know, it starts with the good guy dying and he doesn't manage to save either hostage. And then, you know, he's being hunted by this homicidal psycho who keeps killing. And, you know, even if 
Like he doesn't manage to kill an awful lot of like civilians, but he does end up killing basically everyone who worked on the Unisol project. Some of whom were clearly, you know, good people. And you know, he's he's killing and you know, even if he isn't killing civilians, he's killing innocent cops. He's killing, you know, cops who are just on the job. And you know, I innocent cops. This was ninety two. Today they probably wouldn't be innocent, but anyway. Yeah. And they would definitely shoot him a number of times. Yeah, so so the yeah, clearly, you know, you, you want Scott stopped. You and, and you know you're cheering Luke on in this final fight. And to then have that, you know, culminate in him being shot a bunch and you know, nope, those weren't your actual parents. Oh yeah, and, and his mother also gets killed. And now his mother, you know, also gets killed in the alternate ending, but yeah, then, who, who clearly, she, she did not quite take to English. You know, Jean keeps, the, the subtitle, I mean, I, I had to watch Danish subtitles. I hate when there are English subtitles for the English movies. Anyway, yeah, I had to watch Danish subtitles because I, um, I, I read once that, like, we Danes are used to subtitles because we've had them even on you know television even on Danish programs since like 1920 or something it's it's insane so yeah me personally completely used to it not sure that's true of all Danes but or even a majority but yeah had to watch Danish subtitles so I would be able to pick everything the subtitle kept writing the father's name is John it was clearly Jean you know it's, Luke Devereaux, Jean Devereaux, and did we learn her name, the mother? I, she might have just been called Mrs. Devereaux. Yeah, anyway, you know, she, she's like calling Veronica Mademoiselle and, you know, Bonjour and Nepa and yeah, you know. So, anyway, yeah, alternate ending, it was just too much of a downer. And it also, like I said in the main review, it feels like it was just left over from when the movie, from when the original, the, the overall script was more negative towards the military. And, you know, this was, a lot of movies had been very negative towards the military because of Vietnam in, you know, the decades and years leading up to this. But around the time this came out, that wasn't really... You know, people have maybe started to forgive or forget, and yeah, it it wasn't so. So they toned that down, but it there are still problems. You know, now it's basically Colonel Ross and someone else. We never. He says, you know, he tears up some paper and crumples it up. They've called it quits. You know, who? In in the original script, script okay, it was the military. You know, like you know. Pentagon, something. They said this is getting to be too much of a problem. You know, cut, sh shut it down. Who is, you know, who is in charge of Colonel Ross? And and are they going to be stopped by the, you know, at the end of the movie? If you know, yeah. And and they never send someone else after, you know, Luke or like, you know, Scott or anyone. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah, you know, there, there are things left, you know, now apparently Colonel Ross is just working for this little renegade, you know, unit or something. And, you know, and, and as the, the IMDb goofs point out, why is he holding press conferences if it's a secret off the books program? You know, why isn't he just, yeah, and the 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 lie about Veronica killing Huey that's also that really reeks of earlier script with this idea of the military if you know if you if you cross the military they will frame you if they can't kill you and they are still trying to kill her you know, at, at this point, and yeah, the, or, they don't mind if they kill her, you know, they, actually, they stop talking about the film after the, you know, after Veronica and Luke drive off together, they, you know, they, 
they don't kill Veronica because she's by herself. You know, Andrew is told, don't kill her, we need them together. Yeah, they're they're there to kill her. And that again, that's a bit <laughs> much if if it isn't really and, and again if you know with, with Woodward against it and you know yeah it, it does seem like the kind of thing where you know originally it was probably that you know yeah that, that the military itself wanted Veronica and Luke dead and you know and with Luke it's also you know if they do shoot him they can probably just bring him back you know I suppose that pretty much covers it but yeah with with Dr. Gregor briefly again you know it I don't mind Jerry Orbach you know portraying a villain or something but it just it feels more like you know when when you know how could you do this as a doctor I've been asking myself that question for years, you know, and he genuinely cares and he explains it. It also feels like, why would he explain it if they didn't, you know, if he's actually one of the bad guys? Why? Yeah, I don't know. It, anyway, but, but yeah, you know, and the whole explaining scene where, you know, oh yeah, there's like regressive traumatic memory and... <laughs> As long as, you know, we, we had to, we, we froze you, then we gave you, like, healing, you know, we, we ah, what was it? We stimulated, hyper-stimulated, and turned dead tissue into living flesh, so, you know, the dead flesh keeps healing also, but we found that the only way, we, you know, we had to, you know, freeze you, you know, you would overheat and maybe get a stroke if we didn't freeze you. And in there he also says, you know, just hand-wavingly, and we had to keep you, you know, suggestible. And I don't think that's as much a part of, you know, keeping them alive as it is making them really useful for this soldier thing, because otherwise you just have zombies. You know, it, I, I think they, yeah, the, the script writer forgot that that was part of, yeah, which again, I guess maybe makes more sense if you see him as one of the, you know, people who made this happen, who, you know, intentionally tried to, like, yeah, you know, to, to bring these dead soldiers back and such. <sighs> And gotta love the flashback with him as well, where you know when the moment Luke sees him, he's like, oh, "I remember," and you know, and they're all like in there with with like, why don't they sedate him? <laughs> like, do you really want to be doing all this stuff with the equipment? It makes for a cool shot. That's really the only explanation. And and the moment that he's Luke, relax. And I don't know. He must have like some kind of psychic power, or, or maybe Luke is already that suggestible, because just like that, Luke calms down. You know, we don't see him being given, like, a shot of anesthetic or painkiller or something, but, yeah, you know, they're just, they, yeah, they're, like, bring him back to life, and he's like, what's happening? And then just, yeah, I, I feel like they should probably just, Sit, you know, once once you've got the heart rate stable, you can sedate him and, and keep him alive. You, you know, you don't have to, you know, be be struggling with this guy. Just, to, uh, yeah. Actually, that fair enough. They might not have been able to in '92. I don't know for sure, but I suppose that's pretty much everything that I. You do have to wonder if, you know, for, for one thing, only these two of the soldiers come back. I mean, if these are, you know, if these 10 or so guys were all killed by Scott, you know, or most of them were killed by Scott because he went insane, wouldn't they be like, you know, 
scared of him or something and you know actually I was gonna say that also when we see the picture the the other guys on the you know the the picture where Luke and Scott are smiling and you know side by side and other guys those guys aren't in the team but that might actually be maybe they discarded the other members of the team and the other muscly guys died other part other you know elsewhere in Vietnam or something that actually makes sense but but yeah apparently none of them had this traumatic regressive memory and apparently all it takes to wake these guys back up is this one little thing you know we we don't really know for sure where Scott wakes up maybe it is just as he's hearing Luke say they were innocent you know but yeah he is like yeah let's see Luke Luke wakes up just by seeing these hostages that are similar to the hostages that you know okay again you know like <laughs> they're they, they may be related or something you know but yeah that's that's all it takes that's that's a fairly unstable kind of <sighs> Yeah, that, that that really does not make for that good of a story. We, we don't know how many, they, I don't think they put a number to it. They just say this is another successful mission. So it's again, you know, it's not just the first time. Now, I suppose that more or less covers, I... I've already mentioned a lot of details in the action scenes. I I love pretty much all the details. You know, every every time Scott is like being sadistic and psychopathic and destructive. You know, every time Luke is like, you know, love, you know, seatbelt and smokes are bad for you and grabs the sewer, you know, and, you know, oh, I haven't smoked in two days, maybe I'll quit, and, you know, I would kill someone for a cigarette right now, you would kill for a cigarette, no, it's an expression, you know, it's just an expression, I wouldn't actually kill anyone, I would seriously maim, but not kill, you know, and, yeah, Ver Veronica's, <laughs> you know, when, when she realizes, every time she finds out something new, and she goes all, like, you know, and she's super chatty about it, like, you know, I can't believe they framed us, they're not going to get away with this, and they're not going to get away with this, and, you know, it's all this stuff, and, yeah, and, 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 you know, Woodward, in general, the, the, you know, good, good arc, you know, from their buying it to, you know, we, we have to stop, we killed an innocent man, and you know, ice, and eventually seemingly let himself be blown up by, yeah. And yet he doesn't get dragged into the freezer room. Scott just does not have very much, he, he only ever tries to save the, you know, the, the Unisols. He doesn't try to freeze anyone else. So maybe he does have a little bit of an understanding of how that's supposed to work, but yeah. And and you know yeah the the you know for, first it's it's Colonel Scott you better Woodward come take a look at this you know ice yeah. yeah me I probably wouldn't stick my hand down into this icy water and just look that is freezer burn hello that is that is yeah I can't believe I just said hello anyway yeah. Yes, so, so, you know, and then the second time, you know, he's holding it and, and like, showing it to Scott. Woodward, come on. Yes, it's ice. Come on, you know. <laughs> yeah. Now, I suppose that covers everything. Yeah, and I also already said in, in the main review, just, you know, the, the various designs you know the the truck is awesome and you know it's it's being flown around by this giant plane also you know 
which doesn't really make any sense because that truck is way too heavy to be but whatever it's again you know it's the future so or it yeah it was yeah contemporary science fiction yeah anyway they, they made up a bunch of things that were you know imaginative and, and such but but yeah that you know that explains how they can get around all over the world in case you know anywhere they need it and you know and it would also appear that some of the people were inside the truck when it was being flown around I don't think that's a good idea <laughs> they should probably be either waiting on the ground or in seats or I, I can maybe see you know the unisols themselves can maybe be strapped down properly but I'm pretty sure at least some of them you know actually wait a second they might be going out of the one of the other actually fair enough I'm not certain that anyone but the unisols came out of the truck itself but yeah I believe that covers it please comment thumbs up and subscribe for more content